Hey guys, and welcome to I Want My Inks TV Reviews. I'm Sarah. Make sure you are subscribed, or ring that bell, comment along, thumbs up this video, as we discuss the Peacock original, Saved by the Bell. Now, I know I said Peacock original. Okay, let me rephrase. <laughs> this is the latest reboot, remake, of the very popular late 80s, early 90s series, Saved by the Bell. However, this is not the new class. This is not the college years. This version of Saved by the Bell is actually fantastic. But let me back it up a little bit and explain what Saved by the Bell is in case there's a handful of you out there that have no idea. It's Saturday morning and we're in school. Depressing, isn't it? Saved by the Bell is legendary. It started in like 1989 and it was the first Saturday morning live sitcom show to go against Saturday morning cartoons. And if you don't understand, like the bomb-tastic that was late 80s, early 90s Saturday morning cartoons, let me fill you in. Saved by the Bell was airing against shows like Gem and the Holograms, G.I. Joe, My Little Pony, The Care Bears, that weird live action Alice in Wonderland. You get the picture. So the fact that Saved by the Bell was even successful is insane. Saved by the Bell is also a remake of the original Disney series, Good Morning Miss Bliss, which originally followed Haley Williams. Haley Williams? That's a girl from Paramore. Haley Mills, nailed it. If you don't know her, here's some pictures of the movie she's been in. The original Miss Bliss cast was Zach Morris, Screech, Lisa Turtle, and even Mr. Belding. Basically, the show creators were like, kids don't care about adults. They care about the kids in school. So here comes Saved by the Bell. They graduate from middle school, jump into high school, and we get introduced to Kelly Kapowski, Jesse Spano, and AC Slater. Bazinga. Hmm, Zach may be lazy, but he's no idiot. Saved by the Bell tackled huge, issues pushed mostly by the cast. So I know we all know this scene, right? I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so... Uh. This episode was actually tackling teen addiction, as well as trying to point out that teenager stress is real. Hello. So while trying to tackle big issues, you also had characters like Zach Morris who could freeze time. There's always a love triangle, fighting over girls. You also had a character like A.C. Slater, who was a transfer student whose father was in the military. That resonates with so many kids. Not to mention Screech, who's the nerdy outcast. Lisa Turtle, who is like the token black girl of the school. This show was ahead of its time, and every remake to come after has been trash. Until now. You only know how Bayside works for kids like you. Hot kids. Privileged kids. Privileged kids. This version of Saved by the Bell for 2020 is actually fantastic. Seriously, I was honestly shocked. I had the opportunity to watch the first three episodes and I was like, only three? I need more. Mark Paul Gossler is back playing Zach Morris and still married to Kelly Kapowski and also still played by Tiffany Everthesen. Mario Lopez plays A.C. Slater and he is Bayside's coach. Gym coach, football coach, baseball coach, whatever, go Tigers. Jesse Spano, played by Elizabeth Berkley, is also a part of the school as the school's guidance counselor. And I've seen Lisa Turtles coming. Lark Voorhees is gonna make an appearance, guys. Dustin Diamond, I haven't heard anything about, but maybe by the time this video comes out, there'll be an announcement. Zach Morris is the governor of California and not doing a great job. Shocker, everyone. <laughs> In turn, he had a 10 billion million lot of money mistake where he cut a ton of money from education, causing all the inner city schools to close. And the solution is to bust these kids in from the inner city to the valley and to Bayside. Because of course. Total score of 1,502. Uh-uh. Wow, Zach's even smarter than Doogie Howser. Now, growing up, watching this show, which I was a huge fan of, you guys. I, like, had VHSs 
of every single episode of the show. Yeah, back when we actually had to record things, I did that. I did not know what the Pacific Palisades was. I didn't realize that Bayside High was a public school in a very, very rich neighborhood. It's right by Malibu. Things are always taking place in movies and television in Malibu. You get it. Now I get it as an adult. It's totally fun. Going to Bayside High, you have Mac Morris, who is Zach and Kelly's son, and you have Jamie Spano, who is Jesse Spano's son, and Lexi. Lexi, her parental lineage is at this point unknown, but it's possible she could belong to our forties. She could belong to Lisa Turtle. We don't know. She is just here and a part of this crew, and I love it. Time out. What is up with these kids? Yeah. Yeah. Coming from the inner city school, we have Daisy, Aisha, and Devante. Three kids who have never been in a school like this. Excited for the first day of school? Why is everybody so rich? Bayside High and every single student that goes to this school is the extreme of what you expect. They are a part of this heightened reality that no one actually lives in. But they do in Bayside High. Does this place ever stop being weird? Mm -hmm. But the inner city kids, Devante, Aisha, and Daisy, are the grounded side of things. They are where we get the realism. So watching Daisy, Aisha, and Devante navigate this world is absolutely hilarious. And watching the kids from Bayside accept these new students is also very interesting to see. A lot of the comedy comes from these two worlds colliding, but also from these two worlds connecting and coming together for a greater goal. Stop eavesdropping. We're not. We're the Bayside Acapella group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the actors in the show do a fantastic job. Mitchell Hoog as Mac Morris is just as charming as Mark Paul Gossler, just as scheming, just as magical, and can convince almost everyone to do whatever he wants. That sounded bad, but you know what I'm saying. Belmont Camelli takes on Jamie Spano, and he does a great job as the lovable doofus. I love that Jesse's son is kind of dumb. I love that he is aloof, and I love that he's just so precious. He's literally like a golden retriever running around the high school. Lexi is played by Josie Tota, who does an amazing job as like this mean girl, like the snotty it girl who also has a much softer side that we get to see as the episodes progress. And she becomes a much more lovable character that you're not as annoyed with and that you don't hate. Our lead girl from the inner city school is Daisy, played by Haskiri Velasquez. And what I love about her is that she is the groundedness we need, but she also is having a hard time adjusting to this wild, new world, this one percenter world that she is now a part of. And she does find herself getting lost in it and eventually does find her way back. And she also learns a way to respect everyone around them, realizing that they're not all just terrible rich kids. They do have hearts, they do have brains, and they want nothing more than for her to feel comfortable. Devante is played by Dexter Darden, and Aisha is played by Alicia Pasquale Pena. What I love about their characters, as well as Lexi, is that they are tackling gender norms head on. And I don't want to spoil it. I'm not going to say how or why, but just know that I am rooting for every single character in this show for millions of reasons. Everyone is likable. Everyone is really fun to watch. The way that they make fun of themselves and make fun of the show and make fun of what Saved by the Bell was is really great. And it's witty and it is strong. So I hope that Saved by the Bell, this reboot, this version of it, gets a second season. Because really from these first three episodes, it absolutely deserves one. I really wish I got to watch more than three episodes. I need the rest of this show, Peacock. <laughs> I want it now. There is one thing that I think is garbage, and that's the theme song. When I wake up in the morning, the alarm gives out a warning. I don't think I'll ever make it on time. I'm really upset by how bad it is, and I'm really hoping that maybe the version I'm watching isn't the final version. 
seriously, the theme song is so bad, it almost makes you want to stop watching. Don't stop watching. The show is great. Overall, if you couldn't tell already, or maybe just skipped ahead to this part, I loved this version of Saved by the Bell. Every episode I watched got better and better. When I watched the pilot, because you know, going in, I have such a high regard for this show. I watched the college years. I watched Zach and Kelly get married. I did barely watch the new class because that was horrible. So going into this, I'm like, what are we gonna get? How is this gonna go? And I was honestly shocked at how fantastic this show is. And just seeing these two different types of worlds collide and in a smart, funny, and fun way with great actors who get comedy, with all the nuggets I need as an OG Saved by the Bell person. Great job, Peacock. I am here for it. But fix the trash theme song. Seriously, I just got harp on that forever. I'm just, I'm just really upset. When I grow up, I want to be just like you. A single childless adult who parties with kids. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I'm Sarah. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel, thumbs up this video, and comment and let me know what you thought of Saved by the Bell, or if you're excited about it, or if you're boycotting it, because you're like, oh, remakes. I want to know. Ring that bell so you don't miss any of our NC videos. No.